guys, thanks for joining me today. So today I thought I'd share with you some of my spring sewing plans. It's been kind of cold and gloomy and miserable here in London um, over the past few weeks. And you know, I think I just need a little bit of motivation, a little bit of inspiration as the case may be, um, to get back into the sewing room because recently I have not been getting much motivation to get in there. So I definitely have a few things that I am definitely going to make, I think, don't hold me to that, um, in the next kind of couple of months or so. Um, I've got lots of lovely fabrics I really want to try to use this season. And I've also got a few recent purchases from the Sitch Festival, which I'll show you at the end as well. So the first project that I want to kind of get my teeth into is a new jacket. Now you may say, I have enough jackets, but when I saw this fabric in Walthamstow Market, um, I was like, can't leave without it. Um, so I got this from Saeed's, which is one of the brick and mortar stores on Walthamstow Market High Street. Actually, I think it's called, it's the High Street. Anyway, um, Saeed's is quite a big, kind of fabric store it's got a mix of dressmaking fabrics curtain fabrics lots of cottons lots of quilting stuff all of that kind of things but like every now and then they have like absolute bargain wool fabric so I always like to pop in there um I made a coat from there last year with fabric from there which I'll show you here with this red I am Merlin coat and again that fabric was five pounds a meter as was this so this is the wool mix. They tried to sell it to me as a kind of 100% uh, wool fabric, but I bent a little bit and it was definitely feeling a bit plasticky. So it's definitely, it's a poly wool blend of some sort, of which the composition I will have no idea. It's got this lovely purple and green kind of plaid print over it. And I thought it'd be really good to make some sort of jacket, that kind of work utility style jacket that everyone seems to be making at the moment. It's nice and thick. So I probably will get away without needing to line it for a kind of um, springtime jacket where you want it to be a little bit warm, but it doesn't need to be like a, a thick kind of puffed out jacket like I've been wearing over the winter. Um, my plan for this is to use the rear pattern from Fiber Mood. So this is a, um, a long sh uh, kind of workwear jacket. Um, I'm going to make it cropped because I don't want the length. Also, I only bought two metres and I don't think that's enough to make the full length of it. Um, but I was thinking about getting it to that kind of like hip or high hip kind of mark. Um, so it's a ca have it kind of a very casual short jacket, which I think will be a bit more versatile. Something just to kind of throw on um, through that spring, maybe even summer if it's chilly enough. Um, but I really love this colour. I think it's, you know, it's fun, it's bright. Um, without being kind of too in your face and without being that kind of traditional um, kind of buffalo plaid as well, which um, a lot of these jackets end up being in. So I've also got a pile of viscose fabrics that I really want to get my teeth into. Some of them are old from the stash, some of them are new, but they are all from Stuff and Still. Oh, sorry. I take the back. Self-made. Stuff and Still have rebranded. They're now called Self-made. Although if you type in Stuff and Still into the computer, it will still take you to the same website. Um, um, I really like their viscose prints and I have apparently been stocking them over the years. So these are the ones that I really want to kind of get into for this season. Um, I have more, unsurprisingly. Um, I, I like viscose fabrics. Um, I like the drape. I like the prints, um, I find them quite versatile, and I tend to, well, they tend to be quite cheap, so I do tend to get a lot of it. But these are the what I want to try to use. Now, some of them are from a recent purchase. So these bottom three ones here, these three I got just before Christmas. There was, was it just before Christmas? Yes, it was around Christmas time. Um, they were on sale, and um, I thought, why not? So those are quite like nice, kind of, winter springy kind of colors and i've got one more on the top here which i bought years ago and i have been planning on making something amazing with it and i just never did and i think i kept i was so precious about the fabric that i never found the right project for it because i just felt like i couldn't commit to it but i really love it um it's got this kind of woodland print on this green background 
quite kind of old English gardeny, maybe a touch William Morris in terms of the actual kind of floral designs and things like that. And I love this little bunny print as well. What I found out recently is that this is pretty much the same, maybe the exact print or a very, very similar print to the one that trend patterns use in their sample of their 70s floral dress. Um, this one here. Um, I was at the Stitch Festival at the weekend when they had the sample there and I was like, oh my god, that fabric is the same as this fabric. Now, I am not going to be making a replica of that dress, as fabulous as that is. Somehow, I don't think having a pink lame frill is going to be very me. Um, but what I am planning to do with this is to make the By Hand London Sarah dress. Now, this is a shirt dress with a, quite an A-line, almost trapeze shape and a cute little collar. Um, it's quite an old pattern, but they've re-released it with their new size range. Um, and I thought I would give it a whirl. It's the kind of shape I think that I want to have with this. Um, something that's quite simple and easy to wear. Something that would look cute with tights and boots, but you know, something that'd be wearable through the spring too. It's quite wintry colors in my opinion. So it'd probably be more of a cooler weather dress and something I would wear through the summer. But I'm planning to do it, you know, long sleeves, but kind of a shortish style dress with this one. So the other three prints, as I said, was for a more recent purchase. I don't know why I'm quite obsessed with this um, plaid checkerboard thing going on at the moment. It's very like flag in the, you know, this is the kind of pattern you see on a flag or, you know, the finish line at an F1 race or something like that. I don't know. Um, but I like the graphic nature of it. Um, they had a few different um, colorways, but I quite like this maroon and beige version there, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more subtle. Now, I've been kind of really thinking about what I wanted to make with it. It doesn't have a huge, it's not going to have a huge amount of body. It's going to be, a, it's a super drapey fabric. You can see, you can see how floppy all of that is kind of when I'm moving around there. So I didn't want to make anything which requires having lots of volume or anything like that. I also don't want to do anything that's going to be too obvious pattern matching wise because... I am not keen on spending a lot of time doing that. My first thought was to do something perhaps like a shirt dress, like maybe another version of the Seamwork Bursey dress, which I've made once before. But actually now I'm thinking that I might make the Fibre Mood Willow dress. Now this pattern was one of, from one of their first um, editions of their magazine. I think maybe edition two, I'll double check it and add that the link to it below. You can always buy their patterns individually, so it's not like you need to buy the whole magazine. In fact, I think it's the one magazine that I don't have, so I think I actually went and bought that, um, that pattern, but never made it. So the shape of the dress is quite simple. It's relatively close fitted, more semi fitted, and it's got this wrap um, thing happening at the front there. So essentially you've got these two tails towards the front of it that wrap around and you can either make the tails long enough that they just tie at the back if you're trying to save fabric or if you've got enough of it, it will can wrap all the way around to the front. I've only got two meters of this, so um, I'm going to see if that pattern works with the amount of fabric that I have. The pattern asks like 2.7 meters, but you know, with some pattern Tetris, you never know, I might be able to get it on. But something like that is the idea. Perhaps I'll do something with a short sleeve or shorter length to help, um, help me accomplish that. But I thought that that twisting detail, that wrap detail would look really cool with this really stark print. So it's got all these kind of really graphic, really straight lines and squares and then kind of pulling and tapering all of that with that wrap detail. So I thought that that could be an interesting one to go for. So my plans for this next one, um, which a fabric that I love, clearly I'm in a purple and green mode. I've got that fabric for that jacket. I've got this one as well, which has a really lovely bright green emerald green, Kelly green. I'm not completely up to date in all my colour names, um, but this lovely bright green background and this really lovely lilac flower over the top of it. 
Um, I've got quite a lot of this fabric. So my plan is to make some sort of midi length dress. I'm thinking of using the By Hand London Marie shirt pattern. So that sh shirt and shirt dress pattern that is, um, which is one of their most recent releases. Um, I'm thinking that it's got these lovely pinstripe details on the shoulder, a few options for sleeves and a couple of different color options as well. But I'm thinking of doing the kind of longer length um, with the frill. Um, can't decide 100% whether I want to go for the frilled sleeve and the collar. I'm, I'm likely to go for the frilled collar and not the frilled sleeve though. Um, just because I quite like the shape of their cuffed sleeve instead, which still has a lot of volume, but ends with a nice neat cuff at the end. But I'll, again, another one where I'll need to see kind of where the fabric lands me in terms of getting everything on there. This is the problem when you buy fabric before you've decided on a pattern which is what I've always done, by the way. I've never really done things the other way, but I've picked a pattern first and then a fabric. I'm very much inspired by the materials rather than the patterns usually. But it does mean that sometimes you just have to work with what you've got or work around um, problems, a lot, a lot of like um, problem solving when you're doing things like that. But that is definitely an option for this one. Um, I'd love to see what you guys would make with these fabrics, by the way. So leave me comments below. Um, and the last one that I really want to kind of try to use is this. Now, this is a really kind of more of an olivey green, bit more of that yellow tone with it, within it. Um, a, just like really quite a busy, ditzy, florally abstract pattern here. Um, I'm thinking of making just another kind of simple blouse or maybe even like making a dress using the Anthea pattern from Anna Allen, which I've really used twice for the blouse. Um, but maybe a dress version would be cute. I just really love that sleeve. I think that could be really fun. I'm worried about whatever I do in this being a bit too country. I think that that could really happen. Um, so we'll see, it will either be kind of that kind of Anthea blouse or maybe even something with a really exaggerated collar and really kind of embrace a bit more of a 70s look, which I find really um, attractive at the moment. I don't know why they all just seem to kind of pop out to me, all these kind of 70s styles. So I've got a couple more things from the stash that I really want to try to use this summer, and that is just to make some more jeans. So. I have a lot of denim. Um, I If I find denim that I think is suitable for jeans, I tend to just try to snap it up because I've definitely had periods where I have wanted to make jeans and I've just not been able to find appropriate denim. I always find it a little bit harder to come by than I want um, because I always really want quite a mid to heavyweight denim. If it's got a little bit of stretch in it, even better. But colour wise, I tend to be a bit picky um and i don't generally go for very dark ones although i've got a dark one here um yeah it's a bit of a funny one i've always been like this about jeans not just from like making them but with ready to wear growing up um yeah i i, I think i'm just quite picky about my denim colors so i've got two bits of denim here that i would really like to use um the top one is a gray denim which i got from first for fabrics i believe which is a stretch denim um the plan was to make some um new ginger jeans with these which i think i will probably do um i think that they that's the sensible choice with these the other thing is that also i got a motorbike last summer and i have been thinking about making some sort of protective gear type trouser bottom half to wear whilst I'm on the bike. It's really hard to find anything that looks half decent or that will, you know, fit me. Um, so I was thinking about potentially using this and then layering it up with more protective fabric like Kevlar infused or woven stuff that you can get. Um, so yeah, that's the idea here. I'm still umming and ahhing about whether it's worthwhile me actually trying to make protective gear. Um, and how much, you know, use that's really going to be. There's not very many options for that. And I, of course, you want to be as protected as possible. But I've only got a little bike. It's not like I'm going to be racing down the roads by any means. But anyway, ginger jeans with the grey stuff. And then with the blue stuff, 
This is from Fabrics Galore, which I got from a uh, knitting and stitching festival, I think, um, quite a few years ago. Um, this is a really lovely weighted um, stretch denim. It's quite, it's on, it's quite a narrow one. So I've had to buy quite a lot of this fabric in order to get enough to um, to make. And I'll show you how much stretch it is. It's quite a stretchy one as well, which is quite nice. Um, it's got a lovely weight to it, a lovely color. Um, I normally don't go for denims this dark, but I just thought quality wise, um, it really hit the mark. So I thought I'd get it. If I hated what I make with it, I could always just bleach the denim out if I really, really wanted to. Hopefully I'm not going to have to. So my plan with these ones is to potentially try the I Am Patterns I Am Sunshine jeans pattern. Now this is, um, they've got like two options, one for quite a uh, kind of a straight leg and more of a balloon shaped leg jean. Um, and I just thought it'd be interesting to try and you know their fit and see how that works. I have quite chunky thighs and I often find that actually balloon shaped pants do just fit me better um because they tend to have much more room in the thigh area where you know mine are really really chunky that's a different story uh, so I want to try it out I tend to get a bit stuck with jeans in that I have tried the ginger jeans they've worked well for me and I feel like I keep going back to the same ones because I had that whole thing with the Megan Nelson Dawn jeans which I couldn't quite get to fit me really well um like they're fine but they're not what I wanted um that being said the, the shorts I made from them recently were, with that pattern recently were quite were, were very good but um the jeans I made with them previously I have not been able to wear at all they are not what you would want from jeans they look fine when you're standing still but just seriously uncomfortable doing anything else in them so um I thought I'd use this to try out that that i am patterns pattern <laughs> um and hopefully i'll get something that i like from it because i really don't want to waste it oh i'll probably have to twirl um it's difficult to twirl jeans that's the thing uh everything all denim has a different amount of give a different amount of stretch and you know you might twirl it in one fabric and unless like it's identical, absolutely identical to your final fabric, you might find the fit is still completely off um, by the end of all of that. So I, I'll be very careful about how I'm choosing sizing, double checking all of that, do a base fit and hopefully it'll be good enough that I can just do adjustments from that. Uh, wish me luck with that one. So last weekend was the Stitch Festival, which was held in um, North London. It's the second time that this festival was on. The first time was just before COVID. Um, I think that was the last kind of outing and stuff I had, like um, definitely the last sewing outing I had before lockdown happened. So obviously last year they weren't able to do it. So this year is their second go around. So much like the knitting and stitching shows or any other kind of sewing convention exhibition type thing, they have classes, workshops, they've got a few little exhibitions on, but mostly it's just people there to sell patterns, um, fabric, haberdashery. This one in particular com compared to the knitting and stitching shows is mostly aimed towards sewers so it is um, much more patterns and fabric as opposed to knitting etc. Okay, um, I got three bits of fabric. I've been really good this year. I've been really trying not to buy fabric but I thought for something like this I can you know spend with some a few small businesses and get a few little bits. So I bought three bits of fabric in total two from Stitch Fabrics and one from Selvage and Bolts. They are like proper fancy. I would not have bought um, the fabric unless I really thought they were fabulous and I couldn't do without them. So I'll show you what I got. So the first bit, which is from for Selvage and Bolts, um, is this lovely kind of astrological print. I hope you can see that. 
So it's got all lots of star signs. It's got these kind of astrological star circle-y type things and like a star chart on there. And it's got these little gold um, kind of patches all over it as well. This is a viscose, feels like a viscose lawn like slash chalet. Um, and I got two meters of this. Now, Selvage Bolts really do specialize in like the really higher end fabrics. You know, they have a lot of ex designers from things like Escada and Dolce and all of that kind of thing, you know, very, very high end. Um, and they are lovely, lovely quality. I hadn't bought anything from them before because, you know, they are definitely at the higher end of my budget. This was. £16 a meter so definitely you know getting up there I am planning to make some sort of blouse with this um I think that that will be something that's the most versatile something that I actually wear and use maybe something with a bit of a frilled collar because I think that'll be really cute with this design um potentially maybe something like something similar in style to the sagebrush top who knows uh, I haven't, you know, I didn't go into this with a fixed idea. I am trying not to buy new patterns though, so I really want to make sure I've had a really good rummage through the patterns that I already have and just hopefully be able to find something from there that I can use with this. So the other two um, fabrics I got, as I said, were from Stitch Fabrics, and that is these two gorgeous pieces. So these are both Italian fabrics. The bottom one is a linen and the top one's a cotton. The, this one is just got a really lovely directional floral print. So it's got these kind of like lengthways, let me unfold it a little bit for you. This lengthways floral print going down it. I love the graphic nature of it. It strikes me as very designer. Like I feel like I've seen this before on like a net porter website or something like that. It feels lovely. It's a really smooth cotton lawn here. And my plan with this is actually to make this dress again. Um, so if you remember from my last video, this is a dress that I self-drafted um, in the style of the Cecilia Bunsen um, dress where it's just got a really fitted bandeau top at the, at the very top, tiny, tiny straps and a really full gathered skirt. I feel like this is going to be the best way to make the most of the fabric that's here as well of, as well as show, show off the fabric too, because I find that I can really use that fabric well, because I can just add in as much gathers and length as I'm able to with the fabric that's there, which is really handy when you're like, I desperately want to use all of it. It feels lovely though. I am probably going to have to line it or at least line past a bit because it is kind of sheer. It's not very sheer, um, but I do think that with a white fabric, it's always better just to line it, just to be sure. I have got lots of um, kind of white cotton lawns and voils and stuff that I can use to line that with though, but I really love it. I think it's gonna be a really lovely summer dress in this. And the other one that I got is this. Now this is something that I literally could not walk away from. They had this in two different um, colorways and substrates so this is the blue version and they had it in with a black background and um, oranges instead of lemons here and that was on a linen gauze that was a much thinner lighter drapier fabric and this is just in their linen which is a little bit thicker a lot more body to it I hope you can see that you can kind of see it's kind of holding its shape a bit more there but the print is absolutely amazing I just yep yeah, Fell in love with it straight away. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see more of the print here. So it's got these um, Queen of Heart card um, cards on it, these lemons, some pastries, some donuts, um, flowers, teacups. It's just adorable and crazy. It speaks to me of something that's very kind of Dolce & Gabbana. They had this whole Queen of Hearts thing going on um, a few years back and it just feels very like Dolce Resort wear. Um, there, I got the end of the roll. There was not very much there. I got 1.4 meters and it's about 1.4 wide as well. So I am planning to just think very carefully about what I want with this. 
and decide on what to make because I really want to make the most of this print. Now it's a large scale print um, which means I don't want to cut into it a lot if I can help it because I don't want to be cutting right the way through every single kind of card or teacup or lemon that's on there. Um, I'm tempted to make shorts. It is the right weight for kind of bottoms in that it's quite thick. It's got that body to it. Um, I'm thinking maybe even a play suit with it if I can eke it out out of um, 1.4 meters. I think I probably could if I stick with a short play suit with a sleeveless top. I could probably do that. But it's all about finding the right pattern. This one, whatever I do, I'm going to make a twirl of it. Um, there's no point risking something this beautiful, right? So I'll link below to the shops that I've gotten all these fabrics from. So you can also have a look around if you are so inclined. Hopefully I'm going to have some follow through with a few of these projects and you'll actually see them come to life. Um, Fingers crossed, I, I really need the motivation right now. At the moment, all I ever wanna do, I come home from work and I will just curl up on the sofa with my knitting and put whatever's on Netflix on. And um, there's been a lot of Love is Blind. And um, that was a very, very awful and enjoyable show. So if you like that kind of thing, I'd highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really wanna get my teeth into a few of these things. Tempted to do a few little sew alongs, but it's always a bit tricky because my sewing room isn't super bright. So actually filming in there is always a little bit harder than I would like it to be. But you never know. You might just kind of just do it anyway. If you don't mind a bit of a um, bit of a grim background sometimes. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Maybe it's even inspired some of your plans for the spring and summer season. Fingers crossed I actually make some of this stuff though. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye now.